Well, the year is 2010, and Leo Crockwell has barricaded himself in his mother's house after an altercation with his sister involving a firearm. So begins a standoff between one man and the RCMP that has become a legend in this province, and a David and Goliath story that we all love. Attention, do not mess with someone from Bay Bulls. Now, a neighbor had a front row seat to the entire shamazel and wrote a really insightful book about the lengths that the RCMP. CMP went to to quash this incident and the mayhem that ensues. It is a great read. The author is Chris Ryan. I don't know him, but I feel like calling him Dutch. And he's on the line now. What's on the go, Dutch? Hello, Daryl. How are you? Good boy. Chris, I, I, what? I, I liked your uh, Hotel California quote. Uh, you're in, you can't get out. That's what the RCMP taught with Leo. He's in, he can't get out, but he pulled him right. Well, I tell you, uh, Chris, it was... You know, as much as I remember that story, as it uh, as it went down and uh, the news side, uh, what this book talks about, which is just so great, and leave it to people from Bay Bulls, you are a bird watcher and you had bird watching equipment, and you were literally across the bay in an old uh, gravel pit with a tripod on a Suburban, and you watched every single move go down during the nine, ten days that this standoff went off. How, how, why did you do it? Why did you feel like that's what you wanted to do while this whole thing was going on? What we wanted to do, we went there, we, we got in the pit first out of worry out of our, for our friend Leo Crockwell. But when we got there, it just continued and continued and continued, and everybody was waiting for when it was going to be over, but it was one day, then it was two days, and then it was three days, and next thing you know, it was a week. And, and, and we said from day one, from that start, from, the, from the, when that started, Leo Crockle wasn't walking out of that house with his hands up in his air. Uh, and that's... That's the thing about Leo Crockwell that, that that keeps coming out in the book. Have I lost you there, Chris? No, I had to be. Oh, that's the, that keeps coming out in, in, the, in many parts in the book is how highly the people of Babels and the people on the shore spoke of him. Leo Crockwell is a gentleman's gentleman. You won't find anybody in Babels that has anything bad to say about Leo Crockwell. Um, Not before the standoff or since the standoff. Now, I love a bit of historical fiction, and this is really a piece of historical fiction because you're talking about a great moment in history, but uh, the central figure... Uh, of this book is really not even in the book at all. It is everything that goes on around the fact that Leo is in this house. There is not one quote from Leo. Uh, there is, a, well, it's, actually there is, but I can't say it on the air. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's really about what happened to Bay Bulls. Uh, it just can you tell us about what a nightmare it must have been uh, when take us through after the incident with his his uh, daughter and his mother and the RCMP got involved and like it went from there to the SWAT team coming down and it really took off into something that you really couldn't write if you tried. Well, Daryl, my argument since from from the beginning is the RCMP RCMP jumped the gun. It was a domestic dispute that they mishandled from the from from uh, within 45 minutes of the 911 call. Within 45 minutes of the 911 call, the SWAT team was called. Within two hours of the 911 call, they were had the house surrounded with eight SWAT members. Leo Crockwell wasn't up in a window brandishing weapons, threatening people on the street or tre- threatening the police. He was in the house being silent. They jumped the gun, and once it got going, it got bigger, and it got bigger, and it got bigger. It could not be stopped. And I guess you were having trouble sleeping. I'd like you would because, I mean, it just must have just took the town and turned it upside down once this house was not only surrounded, but unbeknownst probably to the RCMP, you were across the bay with a pretty killer camera and binocular, and you can see where all these shooters are uh, perched in trees and sometimes even in people's houses, weren't they? Yes, they, they come in there. Well, they evacuated uh, uh, six houses, but they come in there three houses and put snipers in, sm- snipers in them. They closed down five biz- businesses. Uh, they sent our mail to Whitless Bay for a week, all because it was mishandled. And 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 the book tells that how it was mis- mishandled from the get go. And the, and and the end of the day, Leo Crockwell uh, left the left the police looking like, well, you know what? Well, I mean, you, you know, you talk about the the RCMP show. 
the SWAT team show, day three, the robot shows, day four, the help arrives, the more RCMP help from Halifax and Atlantic Canada. Uh, next, the, the, the calls that come out Leo and the response from Leo, which is so hilarious that you just really gotta read it. Uh, then the battering ram comes in and the retreat, then the rumors of the flood, the Leo fan page on Facebook. This was all happening in real time. It just must have been, uh, such a, and the rumor that he's dead, and so the funniest thing about it, the rumor that he's dead, but you guys, you didn't know he's dead, of course, because this is Newfoundland, and your brother happens to be the undertaker, and he never got the phone call. In the, that Saturday in the gravel pit, when the, when, the, when the police went into the house, the first officer went in with no shield, no guns, with his arms swinging. And I said to my brother Joe, I said, Joe, Leo got to be dead. He didn't bring him out. And Joe said, no, they brought him out. I said, Joe, where's he to? Where's he at? He's not in the air. There's 30 cops in the air. There's no Leo Crackwell. So we left driving around trying to find information. And within oh, within 20 minutes after we left the pit, we got a call from a friend. This is Leo Crackles on Pity Harbor Road in the Ghouls. And I said, bingo, because I knew he didn't come out of the house. And he did just when the water, the flooding of the house occurred, and everybody was probably focused on that. That's when he took his moment to disappear. And uh, as almost the, 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 he's thumbing it to the RCMP the entire time, he turns, it literally is picked up without incident by the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary. <laughs> And when they, 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 the water, the, the first water hit the house at 8.54, Leo was on the ground before 9 o'clock. So they stood up and sprayed water into the house for 45 minutes, and again the next morning they sprayed water in for another 35 minutes. And Leo crackled down on Pity Harbor Road having a player's cigarette and a coffee. Yeah, the the dialogue in it is great. You know, I'm from Outer Cove, and it just it just it's, it reads so smooth to me because you pretty well. It, I mean, it's hard to recreate word for word what's happening, but it's real conversation, and sometimes it's about the goings on uh, at the house and with the RCMP, and sometimes it could be madly off in all directions, just like a conversation would go uh, in a, a gravel pit when you're just hanging out passing time. And exactly. And uh, like I said, we, we went there day one, never thinking we'd end up in there eight days. And whoever was there, whoever left at at, at, the, at the two in the morning, that, that was our plan. Whoever left at two in the morning, the other, per, other person would be back for daylight. So we wouldn't miss nothing, nothing in between. So we were averaging that week around three or four hours sleep, myself and my brother and our other friends there. And not only is the book, it's not, the book is not all my words. The book is the opinion of the six or eight people that were in the vehicles with us for the, the, them eight days. Now, listen, it, the, the nicknames are great, and you, the, there's one point in the book that talks about six or eight Joes. Give me a few nicknames for some of the Joes down the Bay Bulls. <laughs> I can't say it over the air. <laughs> I know a few, that's why I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. Um, so, listen, there's another part of the book that says, Cops don't forget you embarrass them, they don't forget you. Do you believe that? Um, Leo Crockwell said it. Leo Crockwell said to me a dozen times since 1998 when they locked him up in the water for illegally for 140 days. He said to me, he said, they're coming back for me. He said, they're coming back. They came back. And I'll give you an example. Uh, in Christmas 2008, there was a, a domestic dispute in, in Mobile. Uh, two fellows got into a fist fight. One guy went in, grabbed the rifle, ch chased the buddy. Uh, he's the other fellow he was fighting with down the road. The RCMP were called. Within an hour, he came down, knocked on his door, said, you, "Can you come with us? Why did they knock? At, why didn't they knock on Leo Crockwell's door that morning? Mm -hmm. Why was the SWAT team called in 45 minutes? Leo Crockwell never had violence on his record. Leo Crockwell never hurt anybody in his life." Uh, it is a crazy story right from the get-go. Uh, the epilogue, Rosie Mullally helped you out. Rosie's a good friend of mine. It, it reads, it, the, the, the last part where it just really condenses the next uh, year or two of, of his life in terms of the trial and the hirings and the firings of, uh, of all the lawyers. There's actually another novel there. I hope if I, I might hear it from you or from Leo himself because it, it is just a riot, the last two pages of his life and how it came to going through six lawyers and finally getting the chance to represent himself and not doing a very bad job of it. I'm going to give you, tell you something quickly now. I, I did a 21 of the 28 days trial. First, when Leo started representing himself, every 10 or 15, 20 minutes, the judge would say, Leo, you're rambling. Uh, phrase it in a question, right? So anyway, and then he'd get better and better. And last going off, he could go two and three hours without the judge correcting him. And if, if you walked in that courtroom and had to put a, a suit and a tie on Leo Crockwell, you would have thought he was a lawyer.
He could stand up there and ask 30 questions without the judge say, you're rambling, rephrase it, put in a question. Like, it yep. was amazing. It was amazing. Like we say, even I say it in the book, the man's IQ was off the charts. And, and, he, and he proved that. He's proven that more than once. That's a, he's a real folk hero. And this book uh, definitely uh, uh, points out to that. People should pick it up. It is a great read. It's a funny read, whether you know the people of Bay Bulls and the people from the shore or not. Now, listen, there's a little rumbling in there that uh, i got to pick you on this brain before I let you go now. Yep. It, there's a little whole little thing about your involvement with the Liberal Party and people are asking you if you're going to run for the Liberals and you say in the book it's on your bucket list. You have your opportunity right now. I was born into a family with eight brothers and sisters. My father, my mother, nine of them, or eleven of them, or ten of them, eight and ten, two, ten of them are die, diehard Tories. I'm the only Liberal in the family. Oh my God, it must be a great Christmas dinner. And I would never run on the shore because the chances of a Liberal getting elected on the southern shore are as slim as you could get. <laughs> Anyway, Chris, it's a great book. I hope to meet you someday. We can talk further about this. People should pick it up. Chris Rines, Leo Crockwell, the Bay Bull standoff. Hope it does well for you. Great conversation with you. You too, buddy. Take Thank care, you. man. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. It's a funny book. I'm telling you right now. 